Hello, my beautiful friends, my beautiful, powerful friends. I am back with another story, but this one will not be as long as the last one. But if you have not watched the last one, guys, please, please, please take the time to do it because I tell a story in that video that is a very, very powerful lesson on how the dark works and how the dark can try to knock the most powerful light workers on the planet, all of you, off your rocker and, and, and unnerve you and, you know, destabilize you temporarily, hopefully temporarily, but please do watch that video. It is a, a story about something that happened to me that was the perfect parable story to teach a very important lesson. So here I'm going to tell you another thing that came through in channel today and something again, story from my life that is very, very important for all of you to understand. Okay, so the, all right, how am I gonna say this? Okay, so over the last few days around my house, I walked out one day from my front door and there was this big thing flying right by my face. And I was like, oh my God, what is that? Cause it was really big. It was like this big and it kind of was doing this and I go, is that a butterfly? Oh, I think it's a butterfly. But then I was like, well, wait, is that a bat? Like, what is that? It wasn't a bat, but it was this big, huge butterfly. One that I've never seen before. And it was so, you know, it was doing this and it was huge. And I was like, oh, look how nice it's this butterfly because butterflies are, you know, um, a sign of transformation, of metamorphosis, and maybe it's a sign from a past loved one, right? So all of the signs and synchronicities and the way that the divine speaks to us through Gaia, through animal totems and things like that, synchronicities. And I was like, oh, how cool. That's cool, right? And that was my initial thought. But then this butterfly parked himself right on top of my front door. Like literally on the front of my door frame leading into my, the front of my house, he was like right there. And he was up in the, um, right outside my front door for like three days. He parked himself in my house. So that's where I was like, and then even so I was like, oh gosh, this guy, he's so awesome. Like spirit, thank you so much. This is such a nice message. And he must be here. Maybe he's a sign something's changing or something's protecting me, whatever. Like, I was just like, oh, this is really cool. <laughs> I'm totally embarrassing myself right now, but I don't care. I don't care. I'm sacrificing myself for all of you. <laughs> so, okay. So here I am for several days. <laughs> I even like took videos of this guy, of this butterfly. And I sent it to a couple of my friends and I was like, look, he's still here. And then I like, took a video and I was like, I opened the door and it's me. I'm like, oh, good morning. How'd you sleep? <laughs> like, I was just having fun with it. And I was like, oh, he's still here. How awesome is this? Right? <laughs> so, oh my God. Okay. I'm going to try to get this story out. So it's not as long as the other one. It's promise you it's not that long. I'm almost done with it. <laughs> so for like three days, I'm just like, this is so cool. He's showing up like around the eclipse, <laughs> justifying all these great spiritual reasons why this guy's here. And, um, <laughs> all right, I have to get it together. I'm sorry. All right, all right, I can't. Okay, okay, deep breath. Hold on, let me get, let me get a drink of something first. No, because I'm going to spit it out if I do. <clears throat> okay. Okay. <laughs> I guess it's like make fun of Erica Day today because all the other stories I'm having to tell you. All right. She's <laughs> just like crying. All right. So, because <laughs> at this point, this guy's not leaving. He's like trying to definitely send me a message, right? But I'm like, oh, it's so great. So, and then I thought to myself, are you sure, Erica? Like, are you sure this is a good thing? Her, like, my guides were like, are you really 
sure. Because then I thought, like a friend of mine who said like, oh, I don't know the name of like, there's some really, and then I figured out it was probably a moth, not a butterfly. And that was the first ding, 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 ding. Okay, not a, not a butterfly, but a moth. And I go, okay, moth. I know in the animal totem world, right? Moths are similar to butterflies, right? They do get a bad rap. As with everything good in the world, okay, this is a great example of this, just coming to me now. As with everything great in the world, it's good and, it's, and it can be used for the dark. It can be the light and used for the dark. We see this manipulation of things like um, certain numbers are evil and of the dark. But meanwhile, those are very sacred numbers, right? So it's not the number, it's not the thing, it's, it's whether it's being used for the good or the bad, right? It's the tool that the dark or the light can use, right? Some of the most sacred numbers in the planet, I heard a video the other day of somebody who was just like, oh my God, that's the work of the devil. If you see these numbers, it means it's the devil. And I'm like, no, it can be, it can be a sign that's used by people who do their thing. Shouldn't say that word because I will get censored. But anyway, so the point being, a moth doesn't necessarily mean a bad thing, right? But it's an indicator that, oh, are you sure that this is really of the light like you think? Because the dark knows that the light workers understand the goodness potential of everything and also the darkness potential of everything. But we can get into this lulled sense of security of like, oh, everything's good. I'm protected. I'm in my light, so I'm protected. And be vigilant. That ties to my last video. Please go watch it. Put it on when you're cleaning the house or something, right? Because it is a little long, but, um, but be vigilant. And so here I am. At one point, I was flying, I was out there and it was flying around me. And I had the door to my front, the front of my house open. This thing almost flew into my house, but it didn't. There was an invisible force field that prevented it from coming in, which no joke guys, I think is actually really what happened. But whatever, didn't end up coming into my home, thank God. But this is how close this thing got. So. I know it's, I figure out it's a moth. So I start being a little skeptical of this thing, right? I'm like, let me see, this thing's really big. Like, I should be able to figure out what kind of moth this is. Go online, figure out. There's, it's basically like the biggest moth ever. Guess what the name of the moth is? The black witch moth. And even though I know this stuff, Inside, out, up, down, left, right, in all dimensions. I know this stuff. This is my this is my mission and my life's and my soul's journey. I know this stuff inside and out. And even when I saw that name, I thought, haha, isn't that funny? But I didn't immediately go, ooh, right? I didn't go like, oh crap. I still didn't do that because because, because that part of my brain goes, oh my God, that's funny, but I didn't take it. And it was so obvious as a sign from the universe. And I still was kind of missing it because I was like, um, you know, so this is again, part of the lesson for all of you. This, and I was shown in my session yesterday that this was a story that was the, the moth came to teach me a lesson so I could teach all of you guys. And so here's what else. Okay, so the, this is going to be a little longer than I thought. So I figure out, okay, this is not a good thing. Bad, it's not a good sign. It's a sign that the darkness is trying to F with me, which they're trying to do with all of us now, okay? The dark does this. So what I did, <laughs> here we go again. I did what I always do because it's part of how it all works is I worked on the energetic level. I saged, I, you know, went out and I did sage, I did salt, I, you know, I did all the stuff like if there's darkness around, there's things that you can do, right, in the physical realm. 
You can do grid work. You can put crystals out. These things work. But being that this is the realm I operate in a lot of the time in terms of like what I teach and what I do and how I live, I was like, well, that should be plenty. So I do this. He doesn't leave. He doesn't budge. <laughs> he's like up. He's probably like 12 feet high. I have like this really high at the front entry. There's like a really high ceiling um, outside the door. And I was like, okay, well, <laughs> if I leave the sage outside my front door burning in a bowl, right? So it wouldn't burn the house down. My house is made of stucco. But the point is, I was like, well, maybe if I just like really like the sage <laughs> and really get it going, like, that I'm like, I'll just put it outside my door on the ground. It'll waft up. I'll just leave it out there for a while. It'll do its thing, right? So like an hour later, I open the door, the moth is still there. And I was like, what the hell? Like, spirit, this isn't working. <laughs> and finally, I was like, screw it. Clearly, I got to use more force. So I went and I got my hose. I aimed the hose up at the thing. And I didn't even like hit the moth, right? I didn't hurt him. But I aimed it, it got near him, and he flew away. So the lesson about the moth is that even though the energetics, the consciousness, the spirituality works and is true, it is a superpower we have, we have to do some crap in the physical realm, right? It wasn't enough for me to work on the energetics. It wasn't enough for me to do that. I had to do something physically, AKA spray a water, <laughs> stream of water at the guy in order for him to go away. And guess what? He has not even come back since. Gone, poof, disappeared. Because the lesson was learned by me. The darkness is gone. It is complete. He could fly back. I didn't hurt him. If he wanted to, he could fly back, but he's not flying back. It's been days now. <laughs> and I'm like, okay, see? So again, we need to do things in the physical realm. We have to fight the battle in the, in the realm that the dark exists in. The dark exists, yes, in the higher dimensions as well, unfortunately. But, or the other dimensions, I should say. But we are, we are in the physical realm, so we sometimes have to do the physical things as well. Speak up. Stand up. Don't allow it to go. Say, oh, and as I'm saying this, the guy's walking by. Cool builder. Love him. He's my friend now. He was, oh, I got, I talked to him one day the first day. <laughs> this is for the other video. But I did talk to him one day, the first day that they were building, just because I was trying to figure out, like, how long is this going to take? And blah, blah, blah. This is before I knew he was what he was. Oh, and he was so belligerent to me. So belligerent. He was not a nice man. And then I hear stories anyway. So the point is, be vigilant, guys. We got to do things. In the, yes, keep doing the physical, uh, the energetic work. Keep doing the light work. Keep doing the grid work. Keep doing the energy stuff, the crystal stuff. Keep doing all that because it does work. But we are at a time now which things are so amped up, it's not enough. It's not enough to do all of the energetic stuff. We've got to do the physicality of it. We live here in the real world where things are physical. And so when we combine the two right now, that is what we need to do. So again, another example of where the spiritual knowledge and the energetics are not enough. So my friends, now that I've embarrassed myself, completely. It's fine. I don't care. I hope that you got as much of a laugh out of it as I did because it is, it's funny, but this is how serious, it's funny, but it's serious looking back on it, but that is how it works. Guys, that moth can represent a friend that comes into your life to try to help you or something that seems like it's good, but it's not. I've done a lot of videos on this in the past on my channel for years. You can go to my Lightworker series playlist. There's a lot of that woven in about, you know, the dark, something that comes, the dark always disguises like something good. It's how it comes in, sneaks its way in. 
All right, my vigilant, powerful, beautiful friends, that's it for now. I hope that um, you enjoyed this video. Do give it a thumbs up, share it far and wide for those that are um, on this path that need to understand the, the subtleties and the intricacies of how the dark works and how we can become, we can drop our guards. We can drop our guards. And through these experiences and lessons, we strengthen our light and we really are in the warrior stance right now. We are all in our sacred masculine. So I will come back on another video with another powerful story about the sacred masculine on um, in the world right now and what I was shown. So until then, guys, I send you so much love. Bye.